Hi, my name is Manish Gupta, and in this video, I'm going to talk about Microsoft's Phi 3, which is a very recently released model. Let's get started. How is Phi 3 trained, right? So what is different and how is it trained, uh, let's say, compared to Phi 2, Phi 1.5, and Phi 1, right? So it comes from the same group uh, at Microsoft, the Phi 3 model. So Phi 3 the model actually has three different sizes, Phi 3 mini, Phi 3 small, and Phi 3 medium. Phi 3 mini is 3.8 billion parameters, Phi 3 small is 7 billion parameters, and Phi 3 medium is 14 billion parameters. Now more about Phi 3 mini, it has been trained on 3.3 trillion tokens, which is basically much larger compared to the Phi 2's data. So if you look at the training data, they still follow the same philosophy of using uh, really clean data, uh, filtered web data and synthetic data, uh, but uh, a scaled up version of Phi 2's data. Uh, it has also been further instruction tuned and aligned for robustness, safety, and chat format, so as to act uh, as if a virtual, uh, you know, like a virtual assistant. Uh, it has a, from an architecture perspective, it is just a simple transformer decoder uh, with a context length of 4000. Um, but uh, to increase the context length, they also basically used long rope, so as to essentially release yet another Phi 3 mini checkpoint. So there are two Phi 3 mini checkpoints. One is basically with 4K context length and the other with 128K context length. Okay? So with long rope, they were able to extend it to 128K. Um, they use Llama 2 tokenizer in Phi 3 Mini with a vocabulary size of about 32,000 with the small little changes like begin of sequence token is, is, is changed and so on. Right? But majorly, it basically just uses Llama 2 tokenizer. So any packages that work with Llama 2 basically work with Phi 3 as well. Right? Uh, it has 32 heads and 32 layers. So that's the um, architecture of the model. Um, uh, so if you basically do a four bit quantization and load the model into RAM, you know, you basically just need like about 1.8 GB of RAM. And uh, they actually showed experiments where they have loaded, loaded the model on iPhone 14 with A16 Bionic chip, uh, such that it basically gives you an inference speed of 12 tokens per second. So there's literally a model that can actually run with the appropriate optimizations, inference time optimizations on a mobile phone. Okay. So Phi 3 small, basically on the other hand, is a 7 billion sized model with 4. Point, you know, trained with 4.8 trillion tokens, uh, you know, slightly larger compared to uh, Phi 3 mini. Uh, it uses stick token tokenizer with the uh, vocabulary size of 100K and a context length of 8K. Um, a 32 layer model, and it also uses GQA, the group query attention, with the four queries sharing one key, so as to make the training much, much uh, efficient, right? Uh, it also uses block, block sparse attention uh, versus dense attention in alternate uh, in alternate uh, transformer layers, transformer decoder layers. Um, so it basically uses, uh, uh, so in this 4.8 trillion tokens, it basically also has like 10% multilingual trained data. So while Phi 3 mini is basically for English only, Phi 3 small does have some multilingual training data also. Although in this report, at least they do not really present any multilingual results as such. Okay. Phi 3 medium is a 14 billion parameter model trained with the same 4.8 trillion tokens. Uh, uses a Llama 2 tokenizer though. So this is a Llama 2 tokenizer with the 40 heads and 40 layers. Uh, now, uh, after the basic training is done, they also do post training to align things properly, right? Uh, so, and the post training is actually done in two phases: supervised fine tuning and DPO. So, they do not do any RLHF in terms of PPO or something like that, but they do supervised fine tuning with math, coding, reasoning, conversation, model identity, and safety data. And uh, for DPO, direct preference optimization, they basically make use of chat format data, reasoning, and responsible AI efforts so as to align more closely to how a human would respond to tasks. Now, uh, from a performance perspective, how does it perform, right? Phi 3 mini is actually equivalent to Mixtral uh, 8 cross 7 billion parameters, although Phi 3 mini is just 3.8 billion parameters, while Mixtral 8 cross 7 is uh, uh, around 43 billion parameters, um, you know, uh, although, although at inference it just requires about, about 13 billion or so, right? But still, it is way larger compared to 3.8 billion, right? Uh, and it is also better, uh, it also equivalent to GPT 3.5. So, uh, in fact, it obtains about 69% on, on MMLU and 8.38 on MT Bench. I'll actually talk about these numbers in the next slide as well. And Phi 3 small and medium uh, basically improve on Phi 3 mini. So, 69 becomes 75 and 78, while 8.38 becomes 8.7 and 8.9 on MT Bench. Okay, so next, let me talk a little bit about how does it perform. So, uh, on the right side, what you see is uh, uh, performance reported uh, for several models on academic benchmarks. So, so for example, uh, we have performance for Phi 3 Mini, Phi 3 Small, Phi 3 Medium, and Phi 2. These are all Phi models. And then you also have performance for Mistral, Gemma, 
Lama 3, which is very recently launched, right? Lama 3 Instruct Model, Mixtral, and GPT 3.5. Now, if you look at MMLU, I3 Mini is 68.8, 75.3, 78.2, which is actually better than anything else. In fact, it is better than even, you know, the GPT 3.5, which is 71.4, okay? So, if I3 Medium, if you really look at it, it's basically start state of the art in, on most tasks. So, you know, on most of those tasks, as you will see. So, similarly, if you look at MT Bench, right? Uh, Phi 3 uh, Medium is 8.91 versus 8.35 as obtained using GPT 3.5. So really a state of the art model in that sense is the latest that you can actually put your hands on, right? And you know, if, if you look at really small model, it's a small language model, right? 3.8 billion parameters uh, for a small language model, it actually performs really equivalent to GPT 3.5 in many, many tasks. You know, you take several tasks, you'll find that, uh, yeah, in some tasks it will be slightly worse, but you know, in most tasks, as you will see, it's, it's going to be uh, really good. So, uh, except for a few tasks where it actually performs really bad. So, for example, if you look at Trivia QA, right? So, this is a very, very knowledge intensive task, and there it actually performs bad. And uh, the hunch, as presented in the paper, is that, well, the model has only so many parameters, so it can't really store a whole bunch of knowledge. Okay. Uh, but uh, if you scale it up, well, it can actually handle quite some. So, it can uh, basically, uh, you know, still cover up for much of the accuracy loss. Uh, now, if you look at the scaling laws, um, so this this chart at the bottom is drawn for MMLU. So er MMLU error, so the lower the better, right? And the uh, x-axis, it's basically model size. Okay. So if you look at llama models, so these are llama models. The four points there on this line, they are llama models. You observe that the seven billion, thirteen billion llama, you know, thirty-four billion and forty and seventy billion llama. So those are those are basically the error rates that you can obtain with model sizes. On the other hand, the five model series basically has resulted into significant error rate reduction of, at much smaller model sizes in the range of what, what we can call as small language models in that sense, right? So this is phi 1.5, large error, but if you really look at like phi 3 small, it basically is just this much, like about 7 billion parameters, uh, which is actually uh, almost the same as, as your uh, LAMA 2, but uh, look at the error reduction on MMLU. Right? So that's awesome. Now, from a safety perspective, uh, you would want to evaluate the model on several parameters, like uh, how ungrounded the responses are. So ungrounded responses are bad, of course, right? Uh, does the model spit out intellectual property or, uh, you know, does the model spit out harmful content or it can continue harmful content or, you know, summarize harmful content? Does the model allow for jailbreak kind of things and so on, right? So in this table, lower values are better. In fact, ungroundedness is between zero to four. So as you see, fully grounded is better. So lower values are better. And similarly, all of these defect rate values, basically they say that DRX basically means percent of samples with the defect or you know severity score greater than X, greater than or equal to X. Okay. So where zero means no harm and seven means extreme harm, which basically means that you know again lower numbers are better. So as you observe here, you know, Phi 3 mini kind of series that is there. Now, uh, from an ungroundedness perspective, it performs bad compared to Lama 3 instruct. But uh, on other things like intellectual property stuff, it's better on harmful content continuation. It's better on harmful content summarization. It's almost equivalent and jailbreak. It's basically better. Okay. So, so the idea is that uh, yeah, I mean all of these models have different levels of safety, uh, and five three small is not that bad. That's basically that. Uh, several times it basically leads to ungrounded responses, uh, but uh, uh, otherwise uh, compared to Lama three, com compared to Lama three instruct. But if you compare with the Mixtral or Gemma it basically is equivalent in terms of how much ungroundedness or hallucination it has. Okay, so in summary, in this video, I talked about Phi 3 series of models, Phi 3 mini, Phi 3 small, Phi 3 medium. Phi 3 mini is basically available on Hugging Face. It's also available on Microsoft Azure AI Studio and Olama. It is optimized, uh, optimized versions for Onyx runtime with support for Windows Direct ML are also available, okay? That's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Connect with me on my LinkedIn or look at my research on my homepage. Thank you.